Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 21. Welcome back to Term 4. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome back to Term 4 and another edition of the Mac Connections podcast. And as we do every week or every time we have a podcast, we've got Joe Parker from HeartSparks back with us. Joe, I hope you've had a good break and welcome back. Um, Thank you. Really interesting topic today and one that now that we've got some clarity from our government with regards to the returning of Year 7 years and primary school kids next week, as well as the Year 11s mm -hmm. and 12s, and a couple of weeks after that, in fact, all students, I wanted to talk about the transition back to school. And I'm going to start with a question for you. Is it possible to look forward to something that we've missed for so long, but also have some degree of apprehension or some degree of, I don't know, anxiety about what it's going to look like when we do return, bearing in mind that we now that know that all students are going to go back to school after such a period of of remote long period of remote learning is it possible to feel like that as a student oh my goodness yes the quick answer to that is a big yes and we as humans can be pretty complex and we can hold more than one emotion at once in life generally but anytime there's some kind of uncertainty or lack of awareness even about how something's going to go we can feel naturally really anxious and apprehensive and so it's normal for lack of a better word and also really okay to be excited about coming back to school and really looking forward to parts of that but at the same time to feel a bit nervous or a bit anxious about it as well both of those things are so valid and it's all right for them to exist together so for our year seven students for instance they've They've spent 13 days in the first year of secondary school since March the 22nd, and they're coming back effectively for term four. For our year 11 and 12 students, they're effectively coming back for the year 12s for about three weeks before their exam. So the experiences are slightly different, but as you've said, the emotions are going to be similar in terms of how they're feeling. I'm wondering, what is the best strategy when you understand that you're feeling anxious, but you're also looking forward? What are the things or the strategies or maybe some of the ideas that you should have about how you're going to deal with that transition in the next week or so before we actually come back to campus? Mm. The first thing is really important and you mentioned it there already, which is check just understanding how we're feeling, taking a couple of moments just to check in with ourselves in whatever way makes the most sense and to identify how it is that we're feeling. Because sometimes when we are feeling anxious or unsure, it can be hard even to recognise that that's going on within us. Whenever we're feeling uncertain about something, our brain is subconsciously looking for information or making up stories to try and make us feel sure. And so information is a really important thing right now. If you know you're going to be going back to school, which we all do now, simply checking in with whoever it is that's around us to put a routine in place for that first day so that we know what time we're going to be leaving, we know how we're going to be getting to school, we know where we need to go when we arrive, we know which classes we have first. All of those things that used to be second nature to us can be really good to understand what's going to be happening and be aware and have those things in place with certainty for ourselves. The next thing is to begin that transition a little earlier in whatever way feels easiest and most gentle. That might be simply reaching out to a couple of friends and talking about how we're feeling about going back to school or getting our uniform ready so that it's organised well in advance and it's somewhere where we can see it. Just opening our expectation to coming back, but having conversations 
early. You've got great school counsellors at your school as well. And so this is a really good opportunity if you are feeling a little unsure to book in a time to see them when school goes back or even to talk to a teacher that you trust that you know you'll be seeing really early on and put that in place so that it's there waiting for you. And all of us, when we're feeling unsure or uncertain or anxious, have things that will naturally support ourselves to calm down. So whether it's playing sport or tuning out to TV or a good book or spending time in a quiet environment or getting lost with a pet <laughs> and enjoying time with them, tapping into those things that naturally support us day to day to feel good about ourselves are going to be really important for this next week in the lead up to. So for mums and dads as well, not just the parents of students at year 11 and 12 who are reaching the end, but obviously for parents of younger students, it sounds, that, it sounds like it would be really important to have a conversation around how you're feeling about your return and asking your sons and daughters about what they see as the challenges and what they see as the almost like, you know, the positives and negatives of returning and how you're going to deal with each of those. Would, mm -hmm. would I say that if parents are sort of engaging in that conversation and not just being excited about the fact that they're going to have the homes to themselves to some <laughs> degree, that would be a really important part of this transition back to school, no matter what the age of the child? Absolutely. And the key here for parents or guardians, family, friends, whoever, is just to be really curious and also to drop any assumptions around how students might be feeling right now. It can be easy to come in with preconceived ideas around how someone in our family might feel or what they might need based on us knowing them really well. But this is such a unique and different time. And so what every student needs to support them and how they're feeling can be really different and unique too. So we've had lots of different experiences here. Some students will say to you that they've thrived through this period of remote learning and the fact that they've gained independence. They're going to have to deal with losing that control and losing that independence and going back to a day at school that is dictated by bells and classes and all that sort of thing. We're going to have some students who have been away from school for such a long time and progressively have become disengaged in, in maybe some of their learning and some of their connection. I think, is there, a, is there a message that when we are able to get back into a routine that over time we'll be okay, that we'll get back to being used to the way that it was and it won't, it, it's never as bad and it's never as worse as what we feel. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Again, when we're feeling unsure, our mind is making up stories all of the time. And often those stories are the worst case scenario about how something might be. And the same way as we've adapted in different ways to being in remote learning and being at home, we will again also adapt to being back in school. But it's important to be really gentle and cautious with ourselves too. And so the more we can focus on quick wins, things that are going to make us feel good, understanding that we need to let go of control a little bit and allowing ourselves to be really annoyed about that, but also to continue to show up and be engaged with everything that sits behind it. And also just taking five seconds of courage to put our hand up or reach out to someone when we are finding it challenging or we're struggling in the first instance before it becomes something that is really just consuming us. All of those small things make a real difference. It's going to take time and that's okay. And as particularly for year sevens who haven't spent much time at school at all this year, it's almost like you're all beginning school again for the first time. And so it's all right for it to be a bit of a roller coaster. However, just like everything, this won't last forever. It's going to get easier and we're all in it together. So Joe, it's it, what you're saying there is whether it be a student or whether it be a parent or a guardian, reaching out and getting a sense of how they're traveling and, and asking and getting advice if I'm not sure. And even in a week or to, two's time, checking in with the homeroom teacher or the subject teacher, and most importantly, with your child is going to be so important in this process. Definitely. Checking in not just once, but as you said, consistently throughout this time. And also not being scared to have conversations about how often we like to be checked in with 
as well so that it doesn't either feel like too much distance or nagging at the same time. Transition is a real modern day educational buzzword, I suppose. <laughs> this is certainly one transition that we didn't expect our students have to experience. And they've re really experienced it in terms of leaving, in terms of coming back, and now in terms of, of, of leaving and then coming back again. So it's important to understand that we need to treat this just like any transition, whether it be from primary school to secondary school or beyond that. Thanks again for your time, Joe. We're going to do one last Mac Connections podcast next week as we return back to um, on-site learning. And we're going to look at year 12 transition and that transition, which is a significant one from school into education or the workforce or even a gap year. And I'm going to look forward to your thoughts there. Thanks for joining us again. And we hope that um, the transition for all the students in the upcoming week or fortnight is a positive one. And we can look back on the memories that we've got coming back to school rather than what we've lost throughout this period. So thanks again, Joe, and we'll talk really soon. Mm, thank you for having me. And as you said, thoughts are with everyone. This transition, even though it feels like the 20th one for this year, is going to be filled with so much learning that won't be wasted moving forward. Please. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.